After analyzing the latest surface temperature data for September, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration has determined that La Nina conditions have officially formed in the eastern Pacific Ocean. La Nina is the counterpart to El Nino, and in La Nina, the waters along the equator in the eastern Pacific are cooler than average. In El Nino, they're warmer than average. This La Nina, though, is anticipated to be a fairly weak one, and it may only last through February of next year. And the fact that it's weak could actually limit its overall impact on our weather here in Wisconsin. If you take a look at the latest sea surface temperature anomaly data, it does show that stripe of cooler than normal water running across the eastern Pacific equator. And when this uh, develops, it's because the trade winds have become stronger than usual, and it pushes the warm water at the surface way out to the west. That allows cooler water to well up from below the surface. It drags down those sea surface temperatures. And this cooler pocket of air then in turn affects the jet stream pattern as it approaches North America. It actually weakens that Pacific jet, which kind of allows it to wobble around and have more variation in its track. It also allows the polar jet itself to become a little bit more variable. That can lead to a stormier track across the northern tiers of the U.S. and can sometimes lead to more polar air outbreaks. But the thing is, here in Wisconsin, we're actually kind of in an odd little spot where weak La Ninas don't necessarily correlate with significant changes to our weather. This is a look at a map that specifically plots seasonal snowfall changes in weak La Ninas. And so what we're seeing here is that we're kind of right on the border between areas that don't really show uh, much of a correlation between those uh, snowier and less snowy winters and those regions that do show a stronger tilt toward seeing more snowfall. So basically, We'll just have to wait and see, which I know is everyone's favorite answer when it comes to the weather. Meteorologist Phil DeCastro, Fox 11 News.